Welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're focusing on the work of Mesoblast, an Australian cellular medicine company, and we have Sylvia Itescu, its CEO, with us. Sylvia, hello. And can you tell us what does Mesoblast do? Thanks for having me. Mesoblast is developing a variety of therapies based on off-the-shelf cellular medicines um, that are able to sense inflammation and can be used to turn off damaging inflammation uh, in some very, very serious diseases. The key element here is that the cells uh, can be used off the shelf. They're, they're um, sourced from healthy young donors. They're batched, they're expanded, uh, and they're released with, using very strict criteria so that every vial is the same, has the same release criteria. And we're able to ensure that, that the potency of each product meets pre-specified regulatory requirements so that uh, when we use them in inflammatory conditions, they generate the appropriate uh, results batch to batch. Now, at the heart of your approach are mesenchymal stem cells. Can you explain what they are and why they're so central to what you do? Certainly. So these are very, very rare cells that are found in the bone marrows. Uh, of healthy people. Uh, and what they do, what they, they function as, is they have various receptors on their surface so that when you put them into the middle of, of a severe inflammatory condition, they're activated by the inflammatory cytokines. When activated, they then release counter-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory factors that turn off the damaging immune cells that are, that are destroying the, the tissues where the cells are finding themselves. And so they're exquisitely um, re responsive to the inflammatory um, uh, environment uh, and they're able to turn it off. And when the inf inflammatory environment is then tamed, uh, the cells have done their job and they no longer secrete uh, the factors. So they respond and they know how to turn themselves off. And the fact that they're anti-inflammatory means they're also able to protect themselves and cloud themselves in such a way that they're not recognized as foreign and therefore do not induce an immune response to themselves. Therefore, uh, it enables us to develop these off-the-shelf therapies from one donor to treat literally thousands of unrelated recipients. So that makes this approach very suitable for some particularly intractable and difficult conditions, uh, graft versus host disease, for instance, and uh, chronic back pain. Um, Tell me a bit more about those areas that you're in investigating and um, where you are with the trials. Well, graft versus host disease is a particularly devastating condition, uh, both in adults, but especially in children. Um, we're, we're talking about uh, people who have an underlying leukemia that gets treated with chemotherapy, uh, ostensibly cured of the underlying disease, and then the bone marrow is replaced uh, in a bone marrow transplant. And unfortunately, in that scenario, uh, the, the, the foreign bone marrow attacks the body and causes this devastating disease that is up to 90% lethal. And despite uh, therapies that are out there today, particularly in children where there's nothing approved for children under 12, uh, this, this condition approaches 90% mortality. Our cells injected intravenously in, in these very, very sick children uh, twice a week for four weeks result in, in substantial uh, in induction of remissions and an overall survival, long-term curative outcomes that make a major difference in, in the lives of, of course, these children and their families. We've completed a phase three trial. We've completed multiple trials in addition to the phase three trial um, and are before the FDA with a, a submission to hopefully get uh, a, an approval for this as being the first indication in the US market for an approved therapy for children with graphic host disease. So that's one really intractable uh, condition that you're considering, but an, another one is chronic back pain. Yes. So um, chronic back pain is, is, can be caused by a number of different etiologies, but probably the most serious and common uh, is inflammatory uh, de degenerative disc disease, which affects so many of us, as many as three to four million people across the uh, e European Union and another three to four million across the US. And uh, really, despite the fact that there are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and steroids, 
really the, the only thing that potentially makes a real difference in the lives of these people is opioids. And in the US in particular, opioid prescriptions account for uh, chronic low back pain due to inflammatory back disease accounts for 50% of opioid prescriptions. And as, as we all know, the opioid epidemic in the US is a major, major uh, health hazard and, and cause of overdosing. Um, a single injection of our cells uh, to, to into the disc space to turn, tone down the severe inflammation uh, appears to be a very potent uh, analgesic with substantial reduction in pain for up to three years now from one injection. And the, the, the reduction in pain that we're seeing is to such a, um, an extent and uh, to such a degree that uh, um, we're seeing as many as 40% of the, the patients who are on opioids at baseline either substantially reduce their opioid usage or actually come off opioids altogether. As many as 50% of patients in our phase three trial uh, through 24 months had no pain whatsoever, despite starting the trial with moderate to severe a chronic low back pain that was incapacitating. So we're very excited by the opportunity to treat this, this uh, refractory disease with a single injection. And again, we've completed one phase three trial and we've had terrific uh, interactions with the FDA recently about what a confirmatory study would look like with a view to potential approval. And it has to be said, of course, that physicians are looking for alternatives to opioids because they're very concerned about prescribing them in the, in, in the first place. There's such a degree of concern about them at the moment. Now, what are the steps that uh, you're taking to take forward both those programmes? You, 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 you mentioned a couple of things, but what's going to happen, for instance, in the next year? Well, graph versus host disease, we are before the FDA will be hopefully hearing positive news from their uh, review of our, of our data and our dossiers over the next, uh, over the coming months. Um, with, we, are, we will be preparing to interface with the FDA and potentially have our first product approved later this year. With respect to, to the um, back pain program, we have a partnership in Europe with uh, Europe's top pain company, Grunenthal. In the US, we own all the rights and we will be taking this forward ourselves and retaining uh, the, the full market opportunity in the US market, which is a huge opportunity for us. Uh, our third program is severe inflammatory heart failure. And we're very excited by some of the phase three data that we've generated there, where we've seen uh, as much as a 50% reduction in heart attacks and death from severe uh, inflammation associated with diabetes and ischemic heart disease. That's a program that we will be uh, working together with potential strategic partners uh, to bring to market over the, the coming coming years. And we've had very exciting discussions with the FDA again in that particular space. So there's a lot of news flow in the, in the coming months, uh, particularly as we continue to interact with FDA on our first products for the US market. And heart failure, of course, a uh, uh growing market. I mean, the, the absolute pandemic of heart failure coming towards us. We've saved people from heart attacks by better treatment, but actually heart failure still remains an enormous problem. What's the number one killer of people in the Western world? And as many as six to seven million people in the US alone suffer with severe heart failure. And uh, this is uh, the, the, the drugs that are out there today symptomatically improve patients reduce shortness of breath, um, stay out of hospital uh, oftentimes, but do not really have a material impact on the severe mortality. Uh, as many as 50% of patients with advanced heart failure die within five years. It's as bad as many cancers. And that's where we think we've got a, a unique mechanism of action, the inflammatory, um, the, 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 the modulator of inflammation that we think is the responsible for reduction in mortality that we've seen to date. So you've got an extraordinarily exciting year coming up. I, I was dead to ask whether you've got anything else that investors should look out for this year, because that's an enormous amount in itself. Well, well, there is one other area, and that is um, we, we continue to target the most severe inflammation in COVID, in COVID disease, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome. We have had a study that demonstrated as much as a 46% reduction in um, mortality in younger patients who now account for a large number of the hospitalizations through Omicron and, and, uh, and Delta. 
And we're working together with our partners as we prepare for a potential pivotal trial to meet the uh, the emergency use authorization potentially that the FDA has has identified as a potential for us. Wow, that that is some year coming up. Uh, Silvio, it's, it's been, been such here. a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time. We're excited. Thank you.